In this tutorial, we're going to look at how we can add sound to a processing project. So I have a basic sketch set up right now waiting for me to add some of the code in for sound. So it just draws a circle, puts some text on screen, and is waiting for me to click it. Currently nothing is happening when I do that because I haven't brought any of the sound stuff in. So to work with sound, one, we need to have sound. So I have downloaded some sound. So I have some sounds that I have already acquired that I'm ready to use for my project. But if you want to find some sounds, a great resource for that is in Competent dot filmmusic.io there's lots and lots of really good sound here and the majority of it is creative commons attribution so you can use it in projects as long as you provide an attribution to that sound in your project which is super awesome um, otherwise any other resources you find for finding your sounds or you can record and create your own so all of these are valid ways that you can work with it. So to use sound in processing, we have to import the processing sound library. And then if I look at it here in the reference, I'll see here are the different methods that I have access to. Play, stop, pause, is playing, loop. So a number of different things that we can work with. And we will be experimenting with some of these as we start to gain a handle of how we can add audio to our project. So back in processing, before we can work with it locally, we do have to add it as a tool. So under the tools pull down menu, I choose add tool. And then I need to find so we have different libraries that we can work with. We have different tools that we can work with on here. So we have these other libraries that have been created by others. And we will see right here, we have the sound library from the Processing Foundation. And the sound library, we used to use the audio player library, which worked, but it um, was a little bit harder to work with. The sound library is just super easy to use. So with that, I can just click install. And then I wait for it to download it and install it. And now I can see that it's been installed and is ready to go. If I decide I don't want it in the future, for some reason, I can always click remove it. So back here, We'll notice that when I'm looking at this, I'm not referencing the language in the help documents, but I'm looking at libraries because under libraries, there is where I'm going to see the different libraries that have been added to processing. So I can click on sound and then if we look under sound file, this is the one that we are going to be working with. So. Now that I have added the sound library, I can simply say import processing.sound. And if I knew I only needed part of the library, I could specify which part. If I just want to specify everything, then I use the uh, star or asterisk because then that signifies I want to just pull in everything that's part of the processing sound library. The next step is to create a variable reference. So sound file is the type of item I'm working with. And I'm just going to grab my music that I have there. So we're going to just start with that. And then I need to load the sound file into my project. And with that, it becomes a simple music is going to be equal to a new sound file. And then we say this comma, and then I need to reference where it is. It's in my assets folder. 
and I'm just going to verify the name again, bitquest.mp3. So now I can say bitquest.mp3, like that. So we've added the sound to our project, and if I want, music.play. Now if we do this, so your project might take a little bit longer to load because it has to process that audio information. And now I have the sound. And the sound is going to play. Now I have my other sound that was there, walk mp3. So I'm going to make a reference to that file walk. And now, once again, walk is going to be a new sound file. This comma assets walk dot mp mp3. And now, if I just say, oh no, that music. I want to say walk dot play. Now if we run this, so it's loading both of the sounds into memory. So if you have lots of sounds, this process can get really long during the loading. Uh, so sometimes when we bring in MP3 files, so when I try and do it with MP3 and they're really short, it has issues decoding it, and it's happier with the wave file. So there we can hear the wave file is working, the MP3 is not. So I just simply made a copy of the sound as a wave instead of as an MP3. And if we read the documentation, we do see that it supports wave AIFF and MP3 formats does say MP3 can be slow on Android and Raspberry Pi devices. They recommend WAVE or AIF, which are uncompressed so they don't have to decode them. Uh, eventually when we put things on the web and use uh, P5.js, P5.js is um, very happy with MP3s. WAVEs are not as good when we're putting them on the web. So to that end, it works better to Try and do all MP3s. Anything that's long, you want to avoid a wave because the file is just going to be really big. Short sound effects and things, we can get away with it because the file sizes are still pretty darn small. So we notice that the sound just played a single time. Now, if I look in the documentation, I'll see that there's another option for loop. So now if I choose this, So we can see then that sound is looping. So we can, which it would take much longer with the music to find out that it loops. So if I said that with the music and said loop, then that's going to take a lot longer to see that happen. So if I load both of the sounds here and then tell my music to play, when I press the button, I can now say, play for my walking sound. And I did, uh, when I was going from the MP3 to the wave, I did um, add the S on walks because I was just verifying that I wasn't having some other conflict occurring. So because it now has to decode the MP3, we have to wait for that process to happen. So we can see that it's playing it, but it's really playing it. And if I kill the music, we would really hear what is happening with the sound. So what's happening is, while this is true, it tells Wax to play, and it just keeps playing over the top of itself. And I'm just going to kill the music so we can load the whole process a little bit faster. We're going to hear it one more time. So that's playing a whole bunch of versions of it. 
So sometimes what we have to do is we have to use the is plain method that checks whether that sound is currently plain. So we can do that by saying if not walks dot is plain. So we're saying if walks is not plain, then and only then do we want it to play. So now, if I load it, it's not playing over the top of itself, so it's just playing the one sound. So all of these methods, you can dig into them a little bit more, but the ones that you will use most frequently are going to be pause, is playing, loop, stop, and of course, the most ubiquitous one of play. Now, if you have specific points in your audio file that you wish to jump to, then you could use the jump command that jumps to that point in time. So that's something that you can play with. You can also change the amplitude or volume of the sound that is playing. You can change its panning. You can speed it up or slow it down. So there's a lot of really clever and interesting things you can do with the sound in your program. You just have to decide how you want to deploy them.